welcome back well students as i said that uh, in this class we'll be doing hydrogen spectrum and we'll be doing quantum numbers so i'll tell you what hydrogen spectrum basically is suppose uh, here i've got a hydrogen atom this is a hydrogen atom you know that in hydrogen atom there's only one electron and that too in the first shell so suppose i've got an electron here Although in the first shell you have electron, that doesn't mean that hydrogen has got only one shell. It has got infinite number of shells. So here I have got shell number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so on. So large number of shells I have got. Now when we'll provide energy to this electron, this electron can jump to any shell. It can go to the second shell, it can go to the third shell, it can go to any shell. So it will absorb energy and it will jump from lower energy level to higher energy level as it was stated by Bohus. It loses energy only when it moves back from higher energy level to lower energy level. So basically what happens, how it loses energy, this is what we know. But what will be the frequency of the radiation? That basically depends on the difference between the shells, the difference of energy between the shells. Now suppose the electron is jumping from first shell to any shell. And it is coming back to the first shell. Here I have drawn some of the shells, like I am drawing the seventh one also. Seven or eight. Now suppose the electron was in the first shell, we have provided it energy, it has jumped from first shell to any of the shells, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, anywhere. Never draw infinite shell. Because infinite shell is so away from the nucleus that once the electron will go to the infinite shell, it will not come back. There is no attraction from the nucleus on the infinite shell. So once the electron will jump from first shell to infinite, nucleus cannot attract it back to the ground state. So electron will not come and the atom will undergo ionization. Now suppose electron has jumped from first shell to second, but it is coming back to the first. Straight away it is coming back to the first. If it has gone to third, then also it is coming back to the first. If it has gone to the fourth, it is coming back to the first. From any of the shell where it has gone, it is coming back to the first. So whenever it happens, whenever the electron in hydrogen atom, which is jumped from first shell, is coming back to the first shell, the radiation which is given out, we call it Lehman series. So here side by side I will write, for... Uh, Lehman, Lehman series, N1 is always 1 and N2 can be anything 2, 3, 4 or so on. That means it is coming back to the first shell. Again, the, the electron in the hydrogen atom in the first shell has jumped to any of the shell. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, any of the shell. And then it is coming back to the first shell. So the amount of energy it will lose will be known as Lehman series. And it will lie in ultraviolet region, UV region. The second condition is the electron has jumped from the first shell to any of the shell, but it is not straight away coming back to the first shell. In fact, it is coming to the second shell. So second shell it can come from third, second shell it can come from fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, anywhere. So for this series is known as Balmer series. So for Balmer series, N1 is 2 and N2 is 3, 4, 5 and so on. This radiation has got lesser energy as compared to lemon and it lies in visible region. Third condition, we have supplied energy to electron in hydrogen atom. It has jumped from first shell to any shell, but not coming back either to the first or the second shell. It is coming back to the third shell. So third shell, it can come from fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth. From any other shell, it can come to third shell. This series is known as Pastian series. So for Pastian, Pastian series, N1 is 3 and N2 is 4, 5, 6 and so on. 
and it has got energy lesser than visible that is infrared region is the one where it will lie again the electron has jumped from the first shell but not coming back to the first second or third shell it is coming back straight away to the fourth shell fourth shell it can come from fifth sixth seventh or eighth ninth any shell in that case the series is known as bracket for bracket n1 is always 4 and n2 is 5 6 7 and so on this again is in infrared next the electron has jumped from first shell not coming back either to first second third or fourth it is coming back to the fifth shell from sixth from seventh from eighth anywhere so it is coming back to the fifth shell in that case the series is p fund series so for p fund series n1 is 5 and n2 can be 6 7 8 and so on this again is an infrared region these are the series which are given in the textbook i'll add one more here that is the humphrey series For Humphrey series, N1 is 6 and N2 is 7, 8, 9 and so on. That again is an infrared region. So once again, a recap of this. The electron and hydrogen atom which is in the first shell will absorb energy and will jump from lower energy level to higher energy level. That is from first shell to any of the shell. Now when it comes back, it is not necessary that in the first jump, it will straight away come to the first shell. It is not that mandatory. But it may happen that straight away it is coming to the first shell. Whenever from any shell it is straight away coming to the first shell, that is the Levin series. But if it is coming to the second shell, from there it will come to the first. The radiation which it will lose is the Palmer series, where N1 is 2 and N2 is 3, 4, 5, anything. The electron is not coming to the first or the second, but coming to the third shell. Then it is partial. If it is coming to the fourth, then it is bracket. If it is coming to the fifth, then it is P fund. And if it is coming to the sixth, then it is Humphrey series. So this is what hydrogen spectrum is. Here I would like to tell you one thing. Please note this thing. You can see in this structure which I have drawn here that the difference between difference of energy between the shells is not same. The difference of energy between the first and the second shell is very high. Second and third is slightly lesser. 3rd and 4th again lesser, 4th and 5th again lesser, so it keeps on decreasing as we move from one shell to another. But no doubt the difference of energy is very high between the first and the second shell. So even if electron is jumping from the second shell to the first shell, it will lose large amount of energy that will be in ultraviolet region. Many a time what happens, students they generally check how many shells the electron is jumping. So on based on that they decide how much energy will be given out and in which transition more amount of energy will be given out. Whereas it is not like that. You have to see the series. See, even if an electron is jumping from second to first, it will lose large amount of energy as compared to when it is jumping from fourth to from fifth to fourth or from fourth to third. Then the, there the energy gap is not so large. So in that case, it will lose lesser amount of energy as compared to the first one. So Lehman is always very high uh, energy radiation. So this is all about hydrogen spectrum. Now we'll talk about quantum numbers. We'll see what these quantum numbers are. So, quantum numbers. In order to explain its structure, Bohr and Summerfield collectively gave these numbers. They initially gave three numbers, that is principal azimuthal and magnetic spin quantum number was added later on what are these numbers they are actually the address of electron in an atom they are unique for an electron so what they tell it is a set of four numbers that gives complete information about the position of an electron in 
an atom. So Bohr and Sofield gave these numbers and these numbers tells us the shells, the subshells, the orbitals and the spin of electron in an atom. So first we'll start with the principal quantum number. Before that I'll show you the structure of atom because that will help us in understanding these numbers. According to Bohr and field, atom contains central place nucleus which contains protons and neutrons. Then these are the shells in which the electron can revolve around the nucleus. So first is the principal quantum number. Principal quantum number, it is always represented by small n. And n tells you what? n tells you the number of shell to which the electron belongs. The number of shell to which the electron belongs. So here in this case, n can be anything. Like for the first shell it is 1, for second it is 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. My dear students, let us just have a look at uh, the formula we used in the last class. In the last class, we used this formula. Here I am writing n1 and n2. n is nothing but the principal quantum number here. So this we have said that this is the number of the shell. So this n is again the principal quantum number. So n represents the number of the shell. And we have already done that in the formula. So it tells you the number of the shell to which the electron belongs. N can have any value from 1 to infinity. But practically 7 is the maximum value 7 is the maximum value so an atom can have 1 to infinite shell but practically 7 is the maximum value that means an atom the atom which we have got till date does not have more than 7 shells so 7 is the maximum value practically 7 is the maximum value next and gives us an idea about the energy of an electron. So N gives us an idea about the energy of an electron. Suppose I ask you that there is an electron which is in the second shell and there is another electron which is in the fourth shell. Which one has got a higher energy? fourth one has got a higher energy because I told you, I taught you this thing in the last class that according to Bohr's, an electron which is closer to the nucleus will experience more attraction. So it is at lower energy and an electron which is away from the nucleus experience lesser attraction. So it is at higher energy. So it gives us an idea about the energy of an electron. An electron which is closer to the nucleus is lower energy and an electron which is away from the nucleus is at higher energy. But for a hydrogen atom, we can easily calculate the energy of an electron. This is what we have done in the last class according to Bohr. For hydrogen atom, energy of electron is equal to minus 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 into z square by n square. So n is the principal quantum number, it is the number of the shell. The energy will be in joule per atom. So n tells us, n gives us an idea about the energy of an electron in an atom. It also tells us the energy of electron in hydrogen atom. Next point, it gives us an idea about the distance of 
of an electron from nucleus. I don't think you'll have any problem in understanding this point. An electron which has got a higher value of uh, principal quantum number is away from the nucleus. Whereas an electron which has got a lesser value of principal quantum number is closer to the nucleus. But for a hydrogen atom we can calculate this distance as the formula is Rn that is Bohr's radii. R is the radii of nth shell is always equal to 0 0.0529 into n square by z in nanometers. So this is how we can calculate the Bohr's radii for initial. Next, this is the last one and uh, important one because I will tell you a formula for the, in this and that uh, based on that formula you have got a question in your textbook. 8 explains the main lines of electromagnetic spectrum. First I'll tell you what these lines means, then I'll tell you the formula for that. Now students, suppose uh, in a hydrogen atom, the electron was in the first shell and from first shell it has jumped to fifth. This electron is then moving back from fifth to second. So it will lose some electromagnetic radiation. So this is the electromagnetic radiation it is losing. I can, uh, means I am drawing that electromagnetic radiation here. This is this electromagnetic radiation, EMR electromagnetic radiation. Now if I put a prism in the path of this electromagnetic radiation, the prism will break this electromagnetic radiation into its constituent parts. And if I take the impression of that on a photographic film, I will get a barcode. I will get a sequence of lines like this. See, you, you all know that prism breaks white light into its constituent web gear. If you carefully see that web gear again is a barcode of visible lights. So invisible light, no matter here in this case if it is a Bauman series then it is visible but no matter if it is visible or invisible, if it is passing through prism, prism will break it into its constituents. So you will get some lines here. How many lines you will get? That is basically explained by principal quantum number. If you know the difference where from the electron is coming and to which shell it is coming, if you know the difference between these two shells, you can easily calculate the number of spectral lines. I will give you one example for that. So it explains the number of main lines. It explains the main lines of electromagnetic spectrum as number of spectral lines is always equal to n into n minus 1 by 2. There is a question given in your textbook in which it states that an electron is in the sixth shell. In a hydrogen atom, the electron is in the sixth shell. And from sixth shell, it is dropping back to the first shell. How many spectral lines you will get? Well, in this case, the number of shells which electron is traveling is 6. So, number of spectral line which you will get is 6 into 6 minus 1 by 2, that is 30 by 2, that is 15. So, hydrogen will give 15 spectral line. Hence, if you know the principal quantum number, you can easily calculate the number of spectral lines. This is all about principal quantum number. Next, we will move on to the second quantum number. The second quantum number is the azimuthal, also known as angular or subsidiary quantum number. Well, this quantum number is represented by small l. L tells you what? number of subshell within a shell. 
Well, according to Bohr and Summerfield, atom is not only made up of shells, but if you magnify a shell, a shell itself consists of some small shells known as subshells. So shells they are further divided into subshells. I know that my electron is in this particular shell. Say it is in the fourth shell. Then in that shell you have got subshell. In which subshell that electron is? This is explained by azimuthal quantum number, which we represented by small l. So it tells us the number of subshell within a shell to which the electron belongs. I write that also. To which the electron belongs. Well, L can have any value depending on the value of N, that is principal quantum number. So different shells, they have different number of subshells. All shells, it does not have same number of subshells. For example, if I talk about uh, the first shell, n is equal to 1 for the first shell. For second shell, it is 2. For third shell, it is 3. For fourth shell, it is 4. For fifth shell, it is 5. For sixth shell, it is 6. For seventh shell, it is 7. My dear student, I told you that L can have any value depending on the value of n as L is equal to 0 to n minus 1. L is equal to 0 to n minus 1. So if I talk about first shell, the value of L will be 0. Because in this case, it is 0 to 1 minus 1. 0 to 1 minus 1 means again 0. So you will have only one subshell in the first shell whose azimuthal quantum number is 0. So first shell has got only one subshell with azimuthal quantum number 0. If I talk about second shell, in second shell the value of L will be 0 to 2 minus 1, that is 1. So second shell will have two subshells, that is 0 and 1. Likewise third subshell will have three subshells. Here in this case it is 0 to 3 minus 1, that is 2. So 0, 1 and 2, that is 0, 1 and 2. Fourth will have four subshells that is 0, 1, 2, and 3, and rest all shells will have four subshells 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 0, 1, 2, 3. In very simple language, my dear students, as I say that um, we have not discovered more than seven shells, likewise, more than four subshells are not discovered, only four subshells they are discovered with azimuthal quantum number value 0, 1, 2, and 3. Any subshell which has got a azimuthal quantum number value 0 is S subshell. With value 1 is P subshell. With value 2 is D subshell. With value 3 is F subshell. Here S stands for S, P, D and F. These symbols they are given according to their spectrum. S, st S stands for sharp spectrum. P stands for principal spectrum D stands for diffused and F stands for fundamental so this shows us that first shell first shell has only one subshell that is S second will have S and P third will have S, P and D Fourth will have S, P, D, and F. Rest all will have S, P, D, and F. S, P, D, and F. S, P, D, and F. So first shell has got only one subshell that is S. Second will have two S and P. Third will have three that is S, P, D. Fourth will have four that is S, P, D, and F. And rest all shells will have these four subshells that is S, P, D, and F subshell. So this is what azimuthal quantum number it tells us. We call it angular quantum number because it also tells us the angular momentum. Write it here. It tells us the angular momentum. We can say 
orbital angular momentum possessed by an electron. So it tells us the angular momentum of electron. That is omega, that is the angular momentum is equal to root of L into L plus 1 into h upon 2 pi where l is the azimuthal quantum number h you know is the Planck constant last point about uh, azimuthal quantum number it explains the fine lines of electromagnetic spectrum so if we have a look at our electromagnetic spectrum again, this is this is the electromagnetic spectrum we have got here. Electromagnetic spectrum. Where you have got dark line, main line, which were explained by principal quantum number. But if you magnify these dark line, you will see them as combination of some fine lines. So fine lines they were explained according to azimuthal quantum number because they are basically representing the subshells. So this is all about azimuthal quantum number. Next, we'll move on to the third one, that is magnetic quantum number. It is represented by small m. m tells you what? The number of orbital within a subshell to which the electron belongs. So it tells us the number of orbital within a subshell to which the electron belongs. Shells they are divided into subshells, subshells they are divided into orbital and I, I told you keep this thing in mind that first shell has got only one subshell, second has got two, third has got three, fourth has got four and rest all they have got four. So M can have any value depending on the value of L as M is equal to plus L to minus L. So let us have a look at that. Suppose I am talking about S subshell. For S subshell, L is equal to 0. So M is also 0. That means S subshell has got only one orbital. We represent orbital like this by one box. So S subshell has got only one uh, orbital, that means uh, one box. If I talk about P subshell, for P subshell, L is 1, so M is plus 1, 0 and minus 1. That means P subshell has got 3 orbitals, 1, 2 and 3. Likewise for D subshell, L is 2, so M is plus 2, plus 1. 0, minus 1, minus 2. That means how many orbitals? 5 orbitals in D subshell. So D subshell has got 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 orbitals. Likewise, if I talk about F subshell, for F the value of L is 3. So M is plus 3, plus 2, plus 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3. So, F subshell has got 7 orbitals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, this is what uh, magnetic quantum number is. It basically tells us the number of orbitals present in a particular subshell. Dear students, here I would like to add one more thing that uh, according to Bohr and Summerfield, one orbital can accommodate a maximum of two electrons. The, I'll give you an analogy for that. Suppose your school is a shell. If you are a student, if I'm considering a student as an electron, if you are an electron, then your school is a shell, a bigger part. Your classroom becomes a subshell. Then your table becomes the orbital. And on one table, you've got two students sitting. Likewise, in one orbital, you've got two electrons. 
So the configuration now becomes very easy. I told you that in the first shell, you can have only one subshell that is S. S, as you can see, has got only one orbital, one box, and that can accommodate two electron. That's why first shell has got only two electron. If we talk about second shell, second shell has got two subshell, that is S and P. S has got one box, P has got three box. In one box, you can put two electrons. So in four box, in total of these four box, you can put eight electrons. That's why the second shell has got eight electrons. Last quantum number we'll see. This quantum number was given uh, later on to explain the existence of two electrons together in an atom. This is spin quantum number. It is represented by small s. Well, a question was asked, how come two electrons, they can be accommodated in an orbital? In this orbital, in this small space, how we can put two electrons? Because electrons, they are negatively charged. If we we'll put two electrons in an orbital, they will experience repulsion. They will not remain together. But according to Bohr and Summerfield, electron is a charged particle and they keep on spinning either clockwise or they spin anti-clockwise. They are spinning on their axis. Now suppose, I am just taking it as an example. Suppose the one which is spinning clockwise is generating north pole of the magnetic field. The one which is spinning anti-clockwise will generate the south pole. So in spite of having the same charge, the negative charge, since they are spinning in opposite direction, they will generate different poles of magnetic field and they will experience attraction. So in an orbital, whenever you will see electron, you will see, if you will see one up arrow, the another one will be down. And this is the reason because of which you can you cannot put more than two electrons in an orbital because if you will put the third electron after two you are putting the third electron that third electron will have spin equal to some other electron and they will experience repulsion. So when two electrons they are placed in an orbital they spin in opposite direction so they generate different poles of magnetic field they experience attraction and that's why they are together. Well, as far as spin quantum number is concerned, you can assign any value to any of the electron. Suppose the one which is spinning clockwise, I'm assigning it a value of plus half, the another one will get a value of minus half. So spin quantum number has got a value of half. Plus half and minus half can be assigned to anyone, but you have to remember that if you have assigned plus half value to one, the second one has to get minus half. So this is all about quantum numbers. In the next class, we'll be talking about uh, their electronic configuration, some of the rules like Pauli's exclusion principle, their electronic configuration, Hund's, uh, Hund's rule and plus L rule. This is what we are going to do in the next class. And in this class, we are supposed to do quantum numbers and hydrogen spectrum that we have already done. Thanks for joining. And I would again request all of you to please subscribe my channel so that you'll get all notification on time. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining. Thank you.